What is up y'all? Welcome back to another video here. Uh, Clayton with Fishing for Moose. Um, yeah, today we are back to working on the old DA Integra. Uh, this is something I've been wanting to do for probably the last year now. Um, I'm sure you've seen in the video, you know, thumbnail what we're doing today. So we're gonna be uh, putting a fuel cell in the old Honda. So let's get right to it. Woo! tell that I had ran that. So I'm gonna kind of show you guys. What's up, Benny? Benny's working hard in the garage today. Sniffing everything out. Hopefully, he doesn't find any antifreeze. Get away from that radiator. Don't want to be by that. That's where all the nasty stuff is. So, if you guys saw in the last video, we pulled the, the engine on the DA Integra. So, while that's at the machine shop, we're still waiting to get that back from full bore. Uh, the next step was for us to pull the old fuel tank out. So, if you know anything about these Hondas, they don't have AN fittings on them stock. I did that when I put the engine in there last year, uh, and I did steel braided lines in the entire car. So I'll kind of show you how I have those um, coming in here. Let me just see. So I ran steel braided lines in the entire car here. Um, the pressure and the feed, or sorry, pressure and return. And I had cut a hole in the floor there, and they went right through that into the fuel tank. So. I ran them along here and under the hood. And if you have a aftermarket uh, fuel rail with AN fittings, makes it super easy. Literally just, you know, a long, two long hoses that go all the way back to the tank. So it'll make it easy for the fuel cell install. So I kind of already did everything um, ahead of time before I'm filming, but I did film a few things. So I'm going to um, probably play that in here at some point, but Kind of show what we got going on here. So this is the fuel cell. Um, I had a, I built a plate here for it to sit on. Um, I'll pull this out. I still haven't bolted it down yet, but I'm gonna pull it out and kind of show you the reason why I had to put a plate in uh, and all that jazz. But um, yeah, what I'll do is I'll show the little video of us welding the plate together and then I'll pull this out and then you can see uh, see how that all kind of went. Okay, so you guys probably saw in the little clip, uh, it was us welding the uh, um, plate and the square tubing together and the reason I had to do that is with this eBay fuel cell here <clears throat> it's an eight gallon um, it didn't sit right at all in um, in here like it was all off kilter no matter what I did there was really no good way so I figured if I put a plate it's a 20 by 20 plate that I laid out and I'm using this lump this lump this lump and this lump to rest that plate on that way it's nice and flat and then i could weld the square tubing on top of that so if you're going to do this yourself in the da integra 20 by 20 by 20 by 20 so it's 20 all the way around it'll fit perfect and you can do the same you know mounting hole spots i did roughly there there and then out here on this one i did so i'll show you what this kind of looks like here it's already pre-drilled all the holes and everything on the points that I just showed you um, in the car. So what I did then was I drilled holes in this tubing and I put nut certs in. Um, it's a tool that inserts those and then you can uh, thread a bolt into it. You could just use a bolt and a nut, but I wanted to make it really nice and, and easy to use. Um, as far as the metal I went with, this is a uh, 3 16 piece of uh, just sheet steel. 
And then I believe that's inch and a half square tubing. You wouldn't wanna go with anything smaller than that. And the reason that is, oops, Benny, watch out, get your head out from under there. This eBay fuel cell has this dip here. So you have to compensate for that. Um, so that's why I had to do it, do it up in the air. I couldn't just bolt it flat to this plate. But yeah, that's it's not too hard. I mean, honestly, you wouldn't even probably have to weld this on here. You probably could just bolt it all the way along it or bolt it on the ends and be fine too. But really, I mean, just do a few welds down the side and that's all you really gotta do. The other thing I wanted to do with this fuel cell, I didn't wanna do an inline fuel pump. This tank is set up for an inline fuel pump. I didn't wanna do that. I wanted an in-tank pump. So this eBay, um, eBay fuel cell is a 12 volt. So what I did, I hopped on the internet and I found this company called RCI. They also make fuel cells and they make these fuel cell hangers. So you can take your you know, OEM Honda or whatever you got. This is an AEM 320 liter per hour pump and goes right on that. Real simple to set up and that'll drop literally right down in the fuel cell. Super simple. Um, these come with dash 10 fittings. Um, I used a dash 10 to dash 890, and then I'm gonna use a dash six um, adapter to go from this. It's gonna go from a dash eight to a dash six uh, to connect, because that's what all my fuel lines are is dash six. So really all I gotta do um, is bolt this down inside with those pre-drilled holes. I'm using big washers on the backside, huge fender washers to make sure they don't pull through. Um, and then I just have to extend these because they're not long enough to reach all the way back here. So I'm just gonna extend them. I got all that stuff ordered. Um, it should be super, super simple. So as long as you guys have AN fittings in your car or you know steel braided lines, super, super easy to do. Um, if not, it's not hard to get an AN um, and stainless line kit for about 50 bucks on eBay um, and run you know, your feed in return. Super easy. I can't stress it enough. If you're scared, don't be. Just run it along the frame rail and you can pop it through one of the holes in the firewall and attach it right to it. And I have a couple filters up here as well. I'll show you what I got. So I got this Aeromotive one for my feed, and I also have a Russell right before that. So yeah, real easy. There's the return coming out of that one, and the feed is coming out. Um, oops, I just dropped something. Where is it? Feed is coming out. Oh, there it is. Right there. Definitely, definitely easy to do. Not hard at all. Anybody... Uh, Anybody can do this. Very, very simple, as I just dent the hood. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Ugh. Not too bad, so I'm going to get uh, get the tank set in there and get her bolted down and basically just wait for the stuff from uh, the internet to come so I can hook up the um, fuel lines. <sighs> Sorry, I've been kind of rambling. As far as wiring goes... What I am doing here, I'm going to take the stock wiring and pretty much just change connectors on it to adapt to this here. This is the um, level sensor. And then I'm gonna cut the connector off the Honda one. And I got these nice weather pack style or trailer connectors for the power and ground for the pump itself. So real simple. So what I'm doing now is I'm uh, going to bolt this to the floor. I'm um, using 5 16 bolts um, with washers on the top side, just like that. And feed it through and drop one down in each hole. Uh, on the bottom side, I'm going to be using bigger fender washers and 
nylock nuts. I'm probably not going to be able to hold this by myself and tighten, tighten it down. So I'll probably just tighten it down with somebody else, um, a different day when I got some help, but just get them fed through and at least, uh, at least on there. Um, cause I have to wait for, uh, actually a fuel pump, fuel pump strainer for the pump to come as well. A new one. Uh, I got a new AEM one coming. So yeah, gotta wait for that to come anyway. So it'll be a minute, but at least want to get this bolted down. Um, so I'll show you kind of underneath where those are kind of coming out at so there's one and then the other one is up in front of the exhaust there and there's one right above the exhaust and then one in front of the exhaust on the other side as well so yeah super simple um it's cheap i think i paid 80 bucks for the eight gallon fuel cell on ebay i think i believe i had a hundred dollars in the fuel cell hanger and i already had the pump i just had to buy a new strainer because it was crappy but so yeah i only got you know a couple hundred bucks in this system i mean not including the an stuff i already had that but figure maybe another 60 bucks um so for i would say about 300 dollars, you could pretty much set up a fuel cell in your integra your civic whatever and i would definitely suggest doing it the way i did with the plate here way easier so we'll uh probably cut back to when um when the parts arrive and i can finish this but just wanted to uh give you guys a little close-up before i got any further with this and yeah um next time you see this It'll be in the future, I would say probably about a week. So we'll see you shortly. Whoa, what's up guys? So it's been uh, it's been a few days. A lot has changed, obviously. Um, I ended up uh, shaving the mullet off, but don't worry, it will be back. Uh, so a couple things came in while you guys... Uh, we're on hold. Well, not really on hold for you guys, but I'll show you what we got. So the filter sock came in for the pump. So we're gonna put the pump in. Um, I am still waiting on some lines uh, to get the setup connected. I'll show you here. So these two lines here just have to get basically extended up to where the pump is gonna be sitting. I already got the line or the uh, electrical wiring for the pump itself extended. I just gotta route that uh, so it looks decent. But yeah, I think, I mean, you guys don't need to see me connect the hoses or anything. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get the pump in, um, get that bolted down, and yeah. Probably in a later video, I'll just kinda show you how the, the pump actually works. Cause I can't start it anyways, cause we don't have an engine in here, but at least you can see how I kind of did it. Uh, I did have my buddy Jeremy stop over and he held the uh, the bolts and stuff so I could hit them on the underside with the impact. But this thing is is solid. It is not going anywhere. Um, one thing you might have to do if you get this RCI kit is this thing that pops in here, it's got a slit in it to be able to get it in. I did have to open this slit up a little bit because the hole wasn't big enough for it to fit in. So you may have to open that up just to fuzz. And I did go around on these bolts, the holes, and I opened them up a little bit also, so that way the studs could fit up through. But pretty simple stuff. You don't need any special tools really to do that. Um, this cork gasket that comes with that RCI kit goes on the top side. So just don't forget that when you bolt it down. So we'll get uh, get this fitted in there and we'll get everything bolted down and we'll see what she looks like. So I got everything kind of lined up and set in here. It is kind of tricky to be able to hold that, um, that uh, C-shaped piece that goes in the, that the studs are attached to and be able to slide this in without that falling in. Uh, you gotta kinda do a balancing act. You gotta have your finger in here, kinda in there holding that up, and it can be kind of a pain in the ass. It took me about 10 minutes to be able to get, get it set right to where I could get in there. So now what I'm gonna do, I got just two nuts holding it up there right now. Uh, the RCI kit comes with uh, nylock nuts, and it comes with these nylon uh, ceiling washers as well. So I'm going to go around, put all the washers on, put the nuts on, and then snug everything down um, to where it needs to be. So this is your, your new fuel cap right here, right in the center. That's what this is. Um, we'll kind of go over the, some more stuff about it in a minute.
managed to uh, get this all bolted down. It wasn't too bad. Uh, I went around and tightened them all, strung them up all by hand so everything seemed even. Uh, a couple things I didn't really talk about. So some of the things this kit does not come with. Well, the RCI kit comes with, um, I believe these are Dash 8 uh, lines coming out of here. So whatever you're going to use, most people use Dash 6 lines on their Hondas. Uh, so you'll have to get, you know, adapters for that. No big deal. Also, um, it doesn't come with this here. So basically both of these vents are open when you get it. So I had to buy a dash 10 cap just to plug. Um, it does come with those though. So I just have to snug those up since we're not using them. What I'm going to probably do is I'm actually going to put a valve on here. I'm going to drill a hole into here and run a line out. And then when I want to drain the E85 on here, all I have to do is turn the valve on and I'll just stick like a, a pan or um, a can, whatever, and just drain it out. That way I don't have to leave E85 sitting in here all the time. So that'd be kind of cool as well, having having that option there, um, which you can get those off eBay for about 15 bucks in a, a Dash 10 AN um, valve. Pretty simple. Um, and then I'll just put a barb fitting on that with a line more than likely. Um, so like I said, you need to get a cap if you're going to do it this way to block this one. Well, you need a way to vent this system. So what I'm doing, um, I bought a couple adapters here. So this is, like I said, a Dash 10. So I bought a Dash 10 90 to adapt to a barbed fitting, uh, which I believe is like a Dash 8. So I've got an adapter for that. It just hasn't came in yet. So... Got this here, this will attach on a 90, and it'll show you the kind of orientation it's gonna go. So it'll be kind of off like this, more than likely on there. And then I'm gonna run a 5 16 hose, that's what this barb is, it's a 5 16 And I got a 5 16 check valve that I'm gonna run in line, so that way it'll be able to vent, but fuel isn't gonna be able to come out. So be pretty nice, you gotta have a way to vent it. Um, I'm more than likely gonna vent it you know, obviously to the outside of the vehicle, a good spot to do that. Actually, I already got this. You pull this plug out, you can vent it right here. It's out of the vehicle. Um, don't have to worry about it. Or you can reroute it to the uh, the vent that's on the uh, fuel filler neck. Super simple to do that as well. Uh, and then you'll just have to extend your wires here. No big deal. And the cool thing with this RCI kit is this thing here, you feed your wires down to the pump. And when you tighten this down, it seals up the wires. So I'm pulling on these and it's going nowhere. It's completely sealed up. Pretty awesome. So you don't have to worry about fuel coming out of there. Comes with the cork gasket, comes with the hardware. You just have to adapt these to, you know, whatever lines you're using and whatever pump you want to use um, as well. So very simple to do. I mean, this is probably as budget as it gets to do a fuel cell. Um, we're just not going to be using this at all. I don't care about having a fuel level sensor. So if you wanted to, you could, you know, wire that in as well, but we're not going to worry about it. I can literally open the cap. If I wanted to make some sort of dipstick, I could make a dipstick, you know, stick, stick it down in there, pull it out, see exactly how much fuel, or I can literally look down in there with a flashlight and, and see, you know, how much fuel is in this thing. So not a huge deal at all, but yeah. So that's pretty much the gist of it guys. Um, just, uh, you can see, so this will made up with that. I just have to uh, route it kind of nicely. Uh, that way it's not just hanging there. But super easy. I mean, it's it doesn't take uh, rocket science to, to build something like this. You know, a few hundred dollars, five sixteenths plate, inch and a half square tubing. You could use two inch, whatever you want. Weld it, bolt it down. Very, very simple. So, but uh, yeah that's pretty much all i got for you on this video guys if you could like and subscribe uh also check out full bore enterprises they're the ones that are building our engine currently hopefully we'll have that back next week we do have a dyno tune date set up at king motorsports that is may 18th it is the weekend before uh, the first time we are taking this out on track um that'll be at blackhawk farms memorial day weekend so Hopefully everything goes good there. We get the engine back, all that. But uh, yeah, we'll catch you guys on the next one and uh, hang loose. We'll see ya.